we have prepared your sample now to start the measurement what you need to do is you need to take two more glass cuvette or quartz cuvettes what you need to do is remember that our samples ECDIC mix with toluene so what you need to do is take two blank cuvette and start to fill in toluene okay. take the toluene take the toluene suck it out and start to fill in in these two cuvettes around this much that will be okay so imagine that you have you want to okay, imagine that you have fill in toluene blank toluene without quantum dots this is the toluene with quantum dots leave it aside for a while now focus on these two uh, toluene filled cuvette we need to insert the toluene filled cuvette inside the absorption spectra now make sure you always wear goggles and facial mask to protect yourself from the vapor of toluene just in case you might splash the toluene on your eyes even though you are wearing spectacles like me like this you still need to wear goggles and please do not wear any contact lenses because the vapor will damage the contact lenses and it might damage your cornea so now we have prepared the two blank samples meaning the toluene okay let us see how to fit in this toluene this cuvette this toluene filled cuvette inside the absorption spectra Okay, let us take a look at this side. Now, this is the sample compartment chamber. See, from this side, we open the lid just like that. We, this is the sample compartment chamber. These two chambers or slit is specifically for liquid samples. S stands for sample and R stands for reference. So, for the initial starting up, we have prepared two blank samples which will be our reference so what we need to do is we need to slot in in both slots so yeah, please observe the cuvet we have the transparent side and the opaque side so please remember that the transparent side must be facing at this side so transparent side goes in and slot it like that leave it like that and we need to slot in the second one inside the sample compartment chamber so we have the opaque one we have the transparent one and the transparent side should be facing over here and just simply slot it like that that is it we have slot in the blank samples and close the lid of UVB's absorption spectra machine so now come back to this side so what you need to do is to start up, we just need to click baseline. Okay, baseline. We perform baseline to um, to subtract the reading from the toluene. We don't want any reading from toluene. We want reading of absorption of the CDSE only. So just click the baseline. From usually we'll set this 900 to 190 and just click OK so the machine will take few minutes around one or two minutes to do the baseline and then after that we could do characterization for our CDSE which is suspended in toluene this is CDSE plus toluene what we are doing right now is taking absorption reading from the toluene only later the machine will automatically subtract the toluene reading from this reading Okay. And how do we know that the baseline already done? It will show something like this. As long as there, there is an icon saying stop over here, it means that our, our baseline has not ended yet. So once the stop icon already vanished from this side, it means that the baseline, uh, the baseline uh, process has been done and we could proceed to the next step which is characterization of the sample. So now, how do we characterize the sample? Just simply open this lid again, this lid again, and take out the cuvette 
with the marking of S that is stand for sample this is the cuvette with marking of S take it out take it out and we could just uh, we could recycle the tone wing for washing and all and all that so we just simply recycle it we don't want to waste any tone wing tone wing is not that cheap but also not that expensive but anyway recycling is good for us just simply pour it in a touring bottle. Now, we need to start to fill in the sample with, sorry, the cube with our sample. So again, take out the micro pipette, fill it in with tip, and start to fill in the sample again. Okay, again, make sure the procedure of using micro pipette is correct. I don't need. I don't need to wash the the cuvette because we are using the same solvent, toluene. We use toluene and this sample is suspended in toluene as well, so we don't need to wash the cuvette further. And that's it. That's enough. And just detach the tip and throw it somewhere appropriately. It. Close everything and close the lid of the cuvette. And we need to put the cuvette inside the sample compartment again. Make sure the orientation is correct. This is the opaque one, this is transparent. Transparent is facing that side and slot it in. Okay, close the lid. And what you need to do now is just simply click the start button like that. Okay, if you cannot see anything, that's still okay. What you need to do is you can click this number, make it zero, and enter. If you still can't see, maybe it is too high, and click this number, make it five, for example, still unobservable. Oh, it's very low, 0, 0.0 something, so make it even smaller, 0 0.1 for example. Yes, see, now you can see the graph. Or oh, you make it, it become bigger, 0 0.5 for example. Yes, see this peak? It's giving the first peak, then comes straight, goes upward. This is the first exotonic that I'm talking about. Let us see which wavelength it corresponds to. For example, one. Okay, just simply right click, choose crosshair, and display, and make it make the marking right over here. So the first excitonic peak is correspond to approximately six one five nanometer. The peak is correspond to six one five nanometer. So this is your reading. So what you need to do with this reading? Ah, I'll tell you after this, you need to save this file. So how to save this file? When the characterization already ended, you need, uh, there is a pop-up like this. What you need to do is click this browse button. Click browse. Okay, find D. And there will be data UVVs. Click data UVVs. And I will make one folder like this. The name of the folder is BSP3452 semester 2 15 16. Enter. Okay, make your own folder. For example, my name, my initial, Saiful Kamaluddin Muzakin. Click it and make a name. For example, Quantum dot one. Just open it and again name it again. Quantum dot one and okay. Now you have to save file. Click save as. This is your folder which you have uh, created just now, and this is your sample. Quantum dot one. This is spectral file. Make sure the save as tab is spectral file and click save. And save it one more time. File, save as. 
This time you change the save as tag as data printable. Click it using the same name and save. That is all. So what you need to do is you could still uh, copy that data. Remember that you save it in D data UEVs BSP3452 semester 2 1516 your folder and you could open this file the text document file in Microsoft Excel okay you could use it and replot it or even you could open it using microcal origin which extra marks will be given if you use other software than Microsoft Excel so you could replot this graph over here so what you need to do, you already know that first extonic peak is around 615. So you could use the equation 1 mentioned in the laboratory manual. This is equation 1, page uh, somewhere over here, doesn't contain any page, but this is equation 1. You know the lambda, the lambda is 615 nanometer. Just plug it in and you will get the diameter of the quantum dot. Now, from the diameter quantum dot, you could use the second equation, plug in every parameter over here, and use R, the radius, you have calculated the diameter, and diameter divided by 2, you could get the radius, plug in everything over here, and you will get the value of band gap of your sample by using the only the first extonic peak. So, what does it mean of the first extonic peak? Let us look at the whiteboard again, shall we? Now, we have done the characterization. We could open the face mask so that we could breathe normally. Okay. At the first extonic peak. Now, quantum dot CDAC, quantum dot CDAC is known as semiconducting material. So what happened here? So we have the highest occupied molecular orbitals or known as valence band there are so many occupied orbitals over here and we have the over here lowest unoccupied molecular orbitals and so many unoccupied molecular orbitals here and these energy levels, occupied molecular orbital energy, molecular orbital energy levels, occupied, occupied by what? By electrons. There are so many electrons over here, including this one. And how about this one? This is unoccupied molecular orbital, uh, molecular orbitals. There are no electrons in this orbital yet. So, upon absorption of light. Of light of which wavelength? For example, if this wavelength is 615 and this is maybe 700, this is 800, upon illumination of light of 800 nanometer of light, we give 800 nanometer of light. This electron will absorb the energy of light. However, 800 nanometer, if we convert into energy E equals to C over lambda this energy is smaller than the band gap this is the band gap this is the band gap and this much of energy is not enough to excite this electron maybe it goes up halfway then go back to the occupied molecular orbitals now <clears throat> until the electron is absorbing 615 nanometer of wavelength then if we calculate E equals to Hc over lambda, maybe this energy is greater than the band gap. So that this electron will receive, if we change it into 680, this electron will receive enough energy to be excited to the LUMO energy level. And this is what happened. At 615, all the electrons are absorbing 650 nanometer of. Oh, I wrote 680. Sorry, it's 600 and no, 615. Sorry, sorry. 
No, 680. It's 615. 615. The electrons are absorbing intensely. 615. That's why we got very high intensity of peak. This is what happened. They are absorbing 615 simultaneously all of the electrons and exciting electrons to the LUMO. The exciting electrons to the LUMO. That's why we got this peak. So this is what happened at the first Anti-tonic thing, ladies and gentlemen. Well, dear my dear students, I believe that my explanation is could be considered as extended explanation. So I have done for the theory theoretical part and also the instrumentation instrumentational part, which I believe it is sufficient for you guys to start your own laboratory works. Remember. Every laboratory section, you need to make a hypothesis. For example, this is our hypothesis just now. And remember, you need to prove your hypothesis using the instruments and also the calculations provided. And also, you need to support it using scientific concepts, just like what I have mentioned just now. So, please do your lab work and write your own lab report individually, handwritten, except for the graph. You need to generate the graph using software. Please and please and remember that extra marks will be given for any one of you that using new software, for example, microcal origin to generate the, the graph. And please do not use, do not depend only on Microsoft Excel. Use other softwares, microcal origin to make graphs. Or Adobe Photoshop, start to explore the Photoshop. It's a very powerful tool to to modify pictures or to enhance pictures so use this software or even more you can use other type of software so that you will get extra mark for your lab work so happy uh, hunting of the results and you can start your own work thank you